Okay. Thank you very much for uh, this warm welcome here in Prague. Uh, here I am. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Alexander Minich, and right now I give you some insights in one of the earliest LBK sites of Central Europe. As you can see, um, I have here a slide with different pictures on it. For example, on the left hand side, you can see a flute found at site 2B. And on the right hand side, we have some pots and idols and so on. But before I start, I will give you, okay, uh, where is the. <coughs> Oh, okay. Uh, at first, we have um, the table of contents. As a first point, I give you some overview about the history of research. For example, um, the hydrology, the, the topography of the old settlement, and the geophysical prospections. And I will talk about current and past uh, research projects. As a second point, we will talk about the oldest site too. I give you general information. I will describe our feature which, which is very unique in LBK or early Neolithic. It's a, a semicircular pit in, ensemble. And I will uh, talk about the houses. Then uh, we will see some uh, yeah, things of the material culture studies. And I will give you an overview about the settlement graves of Bonn. Then we'll, we will hop on to site three, which is about 300 years younger. I will give you some information about the houses, for example, and the material culture studies. And then we will look inside into site six. It's the youngest site. It's very special because over there we have uh, not residential buildings because uh, we have storage buildings. And this site is actually outside the whole um, of the um, actual settlement. Yeah, as a last point, I will talk about, um, or I will give you some insights into my uh, current um, or actual research on the um, early Neolithic house constructions. I will give you insights into, yeah, the way I see these houses and the development of the houses. Yeah, but at first, um, we're going to talk about the history of research. Yeah. This uh, important site was discovered by Peter Stadler by chance. Uh, he drove with his bicycle about uh, in summer of um, 1989 uh, for a visit uh, to his parents uh, close to the February road, which you can see here. It's the beat 12. And um, there were some excavation works, and he saw some dark discolorations, some uh, black discolorations in the ground. And he found some shards, and this was the first um, time this whole uh, settlement was discovered by him. And um, the beginning of the first rescue excavations was in the same month, in September of uh, 1989. On the right hand side, you can see Peter Stadler. And the first uh, research excavation started from the beginning and middle of 1990 to 1993 with site uh, two and after that site four. As you can see, site four is situated in this area and um, the, uh, the different sites were found uh, chronologically following the excavations of the street. Yeah, there was another research excavation in 2004. Um, then they found the site one, which is situated over here. And the last research excavation took place in 2005. And there uh, was the discovery of the youngest site six and the uh, southern part of site two. Yeah, um, between the years of um, 1993 to 1905, uh, there were several uh, geomagnetic surveys and uh, in 2013 as well. And I joined the team in 2019. And there were some big uh, geometric uh, surveys on this property here. And um, yeah, we actually have planned one um, geophysical me measurement in the northern part of this site here, one. And it will take place, I think, in the following month from right now. The whole excavation costs 
are about um, 850,000 euros until now. And um, the project costs with about uh, 715,000 uh, euro. So the whole process um, costs about 1.5 million euro until now. Yeah, the settlement is situated on the southern edge of Vienna. You can see here uh, the whole Austria with its federal states. And this is the federal state of Vienna, and we are directly on the border between the uh, federal states of Vienna and Lower Austria. The border is uh, right here in the area of this little brook. It's called uh, Petersbach. And altogether, six sites were found until now. And um, the settlement of Bonham Gebirge is part of a bigger settlement cluster. Um, the closest settlement, for example, is on the other side of the Petersbach. It's called uh, Felix Petrirek, uh, Petirek Gasse. There uh, is a ring ditch system from the Middle Neolithics, and um, there are about three houses found. Then we have um, yeah, five kilometers away the uh, burial site of um, Mödling in den Leinerinnen, it's called. There were some um, extraordinary graves. Then um, we have um, a big cluster of two uh, uh, settlements with type one uh, buildings, the so-called Großbauten uh, in uh, Schwächert at the train station, excavated in the last two years, and um, the bigger cluster in Rannersdorf, it's also the part of Schwächert. And um, last year and this year, there were some excavation over here, it's called Himberg, and um, I think right now they have two houses, and um, a lot of uh, settlement pits and so on. Yeah, so you can call the whole settlement of Bonham Gebirge a um, large regional center or a um, Großsiedlung. And um, I don't know, actually, I don't know. Uh, yeah, don't mind because of the uh, letters, or the, some, some, something switched, I don't know. So. Let's go back to the uh, little brooks or streams. Um, the primary water extraction uh, point is the Petersbach. I mapped it here. This is the historical uh, way the uh, Petersbach flew. And as you can see, there are some um, medieval water mills here. And this is, um, yeah, for us, um, the primary uh, water extraction point from the whole settlement. It's about four to 600 meters north of this um, site one and four. And in the south, you have the Kleiner Grotenbach. It's um, probably only seasonally um, uh, the water extraction point. And um, both streams flow about nine kilometers far away into the uh, Mödling, then into the Schwächert, and then into the Danube. So um, you can call this two little streams uh, like, um, yeah, something like uh, Neolithic highways. Yeah, let's talk about the topography of the whole settlement. These are some, um, um, yeah, digital um, terrestrial laser scan models from um, this property here. And um, as you can see, we have our site one, it's the highest uh, site and uh, one of the youngest sites. And here, um, this, uh, yeah, the whole uh, slope drops to the um, southwest, about 2%. Then we have um, the site two. It's um, yeah, relatively flat, and the hill drops to the um, southeast. Site three is also relatively flat. And we have site four, which is situated uh, directly beneath site one. And um, site five is um, only a little uh, site. There were actually only one clay extraction uh, uh, pit found in this area, but we know from geophysical measurements that there are more houses under this property. Site six uh, is the um, yeah, most southwards uh, uh, site of the Brunnen sites, and it's um, situated actually outside the whole um, uh, settlement area. So we can say we have two main slopes here. One is cropping from the northeast to the southwest um, in the area of the sites one, four, and five. And the second one is cropping to the south uh, uh, east, and it's in the area of, of uh, 
of the sites um, two or three and six. As I mentioned, um, um, there were some geophysical measurements, uh, measurement, measurements taken, uh, especially in the year um, 2018 and 19 on this uh, property. And as you can see here, um, there's our interpretation of the pits and so on. And um, on this edge here is actually site three. And you can see here there's a um, house world continuing to the east. And um, in this property, there was no excavation until now. And um, right now we protected this uh, um, eastern property from uh, overbuilding. Yeah, here you can see some um, clusters of uh, house floors. Um, in the north, you, you have a, a big cluster. I think um, there will be some middle Neolithic findings and um, some findings from the Baden culture because um, in the area of the street, we found Baden culture findings and Lengiel uh, finds. And um, the most important um, row is this row here because um, over there we have up to 20 houses more and we have the southern house row here with about two house rows with uh, more houses on it and this area here is the area of po uh, potential concern and in this year we will do some more measurements here in this area yeah the houses are orientated north to south or, or north east to southwest so it's um yeah, the same orientation like um, Brunn am Gebirge Wolfholz side three. So it could, um, yeah, chronologically belong to the 53rd uh, century BC, and we expect up to 40 to 43 houses more. Yeah, this uh, was a really interesting um, feature because right now we have uh, one of the longest houses um, so far in Austria. This um, yeah, type one building is more than 55 meters long. It's the longest building so far. Uh, I think the longest building um, which was excavated until now is one type one building from Jetzelsdorf and it's uh, 70, uh, seven, uh, 30, uh, 37 to 40 meters long. So this is actually five meters or uh, some meters longer. And the total um, expected area is about 30 acres big and um, the total of all excavated houses and the houses from geophysics are about uh, 120 to 125 houses expected. Right now we have a 500 years of um, uninterrupted settlement history. And um, as you can see here, um, there are six volumes planned and right now we have um, published three volumes uh, the first volume um, three years ago, uh, ago in 2019 with site two and um, the oldest um, lbk and its formative phase there were some um yeah, yeah big chapters about idols hearth uh, ceramics musical instrument and so on Last year, we published um, the volume of site uh, three in the Milanovce phase. Um, here we talk uh, again about the ceramics and so on, the sequencing, the uh, rock inventory and so on. Um, the volumes of site uh, four, one and six are currently in prep. And um, I published um, right now um, the volume five it's called the investigation of the early Neolithic house construction in Brunam Gebirge. And I compared uh, this house constructions, uh, constructions with um, other settlements in Austria and um, from the whole um, uh, LBK settlement area. The last volume will be published about in one or two, uh, two years. Um, it's written by Ina Matichukova and it's about all lithic chip industry of Brunam Gebirge. There are currently two permanent exhibitions, one at the uh, National History Museum in Vienna and um, one at the Heimathaus in Brunn am Gebirge. You can visit it if you want. So let's jump to the oldest site too. It's um, consisting out of two sites. The northern site is called 2A uh, and the southern site is called 2B, but they are uh, chronologically speaking the same. 
The total excavated area is about seven football fields big, and um, this is actually the biggest excavation of Brunam Gebirge. It was uh, excavated in two uh, campaigns between um, 1989 and 93 um, uh, and in 2005. And um, there are about 32 to 34 houses. There are a lot of fragmented houses. So, um, um, yeah, the total of um, total number of the houses is about 33. There we can find, or you can find the oldest ABK with its formative phase. And the house orientation is northwest to southeast. And we have a mean time span of about 330 uh, uh, years, starting from 5,585 to 5,265 BC. And um, all together, there were 30, uh, 32, uh, 33 samples and um, used. Here's a look at the oldest site too. On the left-hand side, you can see the site 2A. It's the northern part of the site uh, 2. And um, over here is the site 2B. It's the southern site. Um, at the um, site 2A, we have um, 22 houses with different state of preservation. And in site 2B, we have uh, 13, about 13 houses. But as you can see, there are a lot of fragmented houses and here in the area of the federal state, uh, a lot was uh, destroyed during the earthworks. Yeah, the houses are arranged in rows or steps. As you can see here, we have um, yeah, typical house rows. And over here, you can see something like um, a stepped house row. And sometimes these house rows are, uh, are very, uh, steep, uh, the houses are standing close to each other, there's no place in between. The same is here um, at site 2B, we have uh, two slightly parallel house rows, one um, with yeah, about five to seven houses and one with about three to four houses. And the house orientation of the whole site too uh, is uh, northwest, southeast. Yeah, as I mentioned, there are um, 21 samples used from 33 uh, samples. And um, now I will show you some peculiarity of the site 2A. I called it um, the semi-circular pit in Sample. It's kind of, um, uh, yeah, very uh, a funny name. Uh, but uh, as you can see here, there are at least several dozens of pits surrounding the southern parts of uh, at least three houses, the house 18, 19, and 20. And um, until now, this is very unique in the LBK. There are no comparable um, structures uh, that are found. And um, it's interesting because the eastern part seems to be uh, a multi-phased uh, usage. And um, the Western part seems uh, to be um, yeah, constructed with a lot of very small and shallow pits. Yeah, the high number of larger pits, uh, which were expanded several times, beach for a longer usage phase in the East than in the West. But I show, will show you more. And in the East, um, you can find up to eight external furnaces here marked in uh, orange and red. And um, let's hop to the western part of it. This is the western part directly cutting into the western part of this house here. And um, the pits were very uh, shallow. The um, amount of fines is low. So we actually don't know what uh, the people did there. In the middle, there is another picture. It seems like um, there is some kind of entrance situation here. The, um, these two pits are very small and they look like post pits, but we didn't find any uh, post traces. And um, yeah, this uh, northern part and the southern part is actually uh, totally free of pits and findings. And um, it looks like, uh, um, yeah, like an entrance situation here. Yeah, the eastern part is totally different. As I told you, there are up to eight houses. And these uh, eight um, um, ovens or furnaces, and these um, furnaces um, surely 
constructed after the abandonment of this house. It's one of the oldest houses of the Brunze, uh, Brunze settlement. And um, it's const uh, con constructed in a very different way in, uh, if you compare it to the later houses because um, the post pits are three times bigger than the normal post pits. And um, yeah, the um, house companion pits are um, at a distance, which is very unusual. It's uh, about 10 meters wide, so the house would have been uh, a width of about uh, eight to nine meters, and it's a very, very uh, wide house. But I will show you uh, right now uh, one of the best preserved houses. It's um, the middle house of um, side 2B. And as you can see, it uh, belongs to the um, oldest LBK because of the extended trenches here on the side. And um, there were no um, wall posts found. But um, this is actually um, the whole setup from the LBK is already there in the very beginning. And um, the length is about 30 meters. Could have been longer because over here there were some um, yeah, overbuilding in recent times. And it's orientated north, northwest. And it's in row with the house 10. Maybe here are more, but um, as I told you, sir, there are uh, modern um, overbuildings in this area. And um, this house will continues to the west. As you can see here, are parts of the house 13 continuing here is house seven and house eight. And this house is um, actually at the very beginning of the Brun sites. Uh, we have a lot of samples and um, the mean start is about 5,560 BC. So um, you can say uh, that this house is probably from the second or third house uh, generation after the start. Yeah, let's have a look at the middle house here at. Uh, inside the um, circular pit ensemble, which is situated here. And it's also um, a house belonging to the oldest phase. Um, yeah, it's probably a type three house, a Klein bar, but it's actually um, relatively long for a Klein bar. It's uh, about 19 meters long and has a width of um, 8.18 meters measured from ditch to ditch. And uh, it's almost the same orientation as house 11, which is here in this part. And uh, it's the middle uh, house of the pit ensemble I showed you. And it's in row with uh, four other houses. Yeah, but let's hop on to the ceramics first and then I come back later to the houses. Uh, we have um, all together, as you can see here, there are about 700 to 800 kilograms of ceramics found, but not described. Um, for example, the percentage of drawn ceramics is uh, from site 2A only 17% uh, right now. A lot of um, the ceramics is still in storage and um, um, only the, um, yeah, uh, the good preserved um, pots, boats, and so on are actually drawn. Yeah, there are two large groups, um, the open ones and the closed ones. For example, inside two, we have 60% uh, closed uh, ceramics forms and 40% open forms. Um, there's a predominance of the open forms. Uh, only um, inside 2B, it's the southern side of uh, the oldest um, site of Brunan Gebirge, and um, it's about 57% uh, out of 80 vessels. And um, generally, you can say um, there's a predominance in the old ABDK for um, open forms and um, a predominance for uh, uh, closed uh, ceramic forms in the young LBK. For example, in the Stachevo culture, it's um, well balanced if you compare it. There's currently no uh, comparable inventory for um, the very first findings of the um, site tool. The only exception is the uh, St. Georgi Peter Dump um, settlement in Hungary. 
but over there we have some problems because um, the houses are very fragmented and there are different um, um, interpretations, for example, in a learning interpreted that there are four uh, up to four uh, buildings standing and um, is the Banfi um, described on the tour, but um, yeah, there are actually no post pits. There are only um, clay extraction pits, and it's hard to say anything about the architecture and so on. Yeah, uh, the ceramics found are mostly um, undecorated at the site too, and um, there are some applications which could uh, root have the roots in the Stachevo um, culture. And um, at site two, we have um, only isolated evidence for linear decoration, like the typical ABK vessels. So something new had already emerged to, uh, started to emerge here. And it's probably not the very beginning if you want to find the very uh, beginning. So I give you some examples. Um, on the top, you have the Amphorea for example, and uh, some vessels. Um, as you can see, there is sometimes um, no decoration at all. Um, we have only 17% with um, ornamentations from uh, 1,700 uh, vessels, and um, only 34% had knobs on it. Um, from the well-preserved vessels, which are uh, 155 wrestles, 14% had decorations and 18% had knobs on it. And um, the most popular um, decorations were depressions, uh, sometimes plastic ribbons uh, with finger impressions on it. Yeah, here are uh, some examples for uh, global vessels, for example, or high bowls from side two, the low bowls, pots, and um, these are actually from the formative phase of the, mm -hmm. and, um, um, from the second period, which is um, yeah at the same time like the Saint Georgi Peter Dump. Here are some examples for knobs on globular vessels, on high bowls, on the low bowls, on pots, and these are examples for very early. Um, knobs, uh, ceramics with, with knobs, and this is the second stage starting about uh, 200 years later. There are some analogies. Um, the first analogy is, of course, uh, the ABK, the oldest ABK, and then we have the Stachevo culture. Here are some examples from the um, early Stachevo culture and from the late uh, Stachevo culture. And um, yeah, the fabric is very interesting. It was um, mainly made from clay with a lot of, a lot of plant admixtures in it. And we find sand and also mica in it. And for about 300 uh, years, the inhabitants of Brunan uh, used this organic uh, admixture in the clay and then it changed a bit. Yeah, we have chaff tempered vessels um, that are used for storing food, for example. And then we have the uh, Barbotin here. Here are some um, examples for functional barbotin, for example. These are used for cooking or heating up some uh, stuff or food. Yeah, there are more analogies. Here are some examples from uh, Brunam Gebirge, side two. And um, on the right hand side, you, you can find uh, comparable vessels uh, found in Turkish Tras, for example, or Anatolia, about 6000 BC or in Bulgaria. And the same is um, to say for the idols. Here's a map from Peter Stadler's image database, Montelius, and he mapped a comparable um, uh, amphorae or idols, uh, which are comparable to the um, ceramics found or idols found in Brunan Gebirge, which is situated over here. And you can see there's a lot of um, uh, similarity in the area of the Balkans, in Turkey, and um, in Palestina, Jordan, um, Syria, and Iraq. Yeah, let's talk about the idols. This is one of the uh, best preserved ones. It's uh, um, yeah, um, female statue. 
Um, we have altogether about 15 idols from site two. And right now we have more than 150 uh, idols in for, for the whole LBK in our database, but actually it's a lot of more. Right now, um, the University of uh, Copenhagen in Denmark, they're starting a big project about the uh, disappearance of the idols. Should be very uh, um, exciting project. And if you compare it to um, settlements in the Balkans or Southeast Europe, there are sometimes more than 200 fragments per settlement. Uh, one example is uh, the Ashakipina um, settlement in Turkish Tras where more than uh, 200 uh, fragments were found. These idols are mostly broken into small pieces. So actually we don't have um, a preserved one. Here are some examples as I showed you. This is one of the best preserved uh, figurines from Brun. And this is a drawing from my colleague, um, Natasha Kotova. It's a press preserved, it's about 19 centimeters high. It was found in the uh, um, site 2B. It's uh, almost made as, um, out of the same material like the pottery. We can find um, botanical admixtures in it, sand um, and orca. We have yellow gray layers and um, we have actually a decoration on the body. As you can see here, there are some lines which are cut into the clay and um, with little holes in it. And in this, this depression, uh, there were there was some bark pitch, uh, birch, birch bark pitch. And actually, Peter Stadler um, took it into uh, radiocarbon Dayton. And this is actually the oldest date from all dates we have. It's 5,670 BC at two sigma mean level. And it's uh, quite interesting because it's a short living material. Yeah, the reconstructed hay is about um, 19 centimeters high. And here are some more examples. For example, here we have um, a spray find from site one or three. It's about 300 years younger or 400 years younger um, as the female either. And it shows um, the pelvic area of um, probably male um, with interesting details. Over here, you can see um, something like a belt. And um, yeah, perhaps laying, uh, a loincloth. The next thing is um, there's um, uh, there are musical instrument found like this flute here. This flute was found also in site two. And this is um, the reconstruction proposal of my uh, colleague, uh, Beate uh, Pomberger. And she played uh, with this flute and it's actually working. And right now we come to the um, barriers or settlement barriers, graves. We have only four graves found. It's um, a very low number, and we have actually no um, burial site at Hundertgebirge. These are all settlement graves, and we hope that we find um, an actual burial site perhaps in the next years. There are some properties still open without investigations, and we hope that we can look there. Here are uh, some pictures of the excavation situation. And uh, we have two graves on site 2A and one um, grave at site uh, 2B. This is, for example, the grave um, 2. Um, as you can see, it was stuck into um, a western longitudinal pit at the bottom of the pit. And um, it's a very small uh, grave. It's 130 to uh, 0 0.66, and actually uh, 0 0.7 meters deep. It's a crouched skeleton lying on the left side uh, with the head orientation uh, yeah, to the uh, northeast and the view uh, towards, yeah, it's um, something like south or southeast. It's um, gifted with six radiolarite radio uh, trapezes and two plates. 
And um, this is actually the grave three. Here are some pictures from the block excavation. It's a, um, it was a very deep uh, grave, about uh, one meters um, yeah, worked into the earth, two meters long, one about one meters wide. It, it was also a crouched skeleton, uh, also lying on the left hand side. And near the head, uh, it was a really interesting find because uh, near the head there was a cheap in imitation of an ads, but um, I will talk about it later. This is the gray four. It was um, also dug into a, a longitudinal pit. It's um, also the western longitudinal pit of a house. And it's 150 to uh, 0 0.60 meters and um, 60, uh, 17 centimeters deep. It's also a crouched skeleton lying on the left side with the hot head orientation to the northeast, view to the east. And as I already mentioned, um, let's talk about the uh, grave goods. These are um, marked in red, all grave goods from grave two. These are the grave goods from grave one. And this is, um, we call it pseudo shoeleisten kyle ads because um, it's made of um, unnatural material and um, it's already really broken into pieces right now. These um, six um, trapezes are from the Semkal region, Semkal radiolite. Then we have the Urkut Iplene radiolite. Then we have um, a local radiolite, it's Mauer Antonshöhe from Austria. And then we have uh, the ads, it's made out of lime marl, kalk mergel. It's uh, a very unusual material. So we think probably they didn't have the right material, but they wanted to uh, place uh, ads or something like uh, similar to it into their um, grave and they uh, made it out of lime marl. Yeah, there's actually one very good um, publication from 2019 about the um, isotopes and archaeogenetics. For example, two of the in vitro had um, a mixture of um, WHG, this is um, European Mesolithic hunter gatherers um, related, and um, the Anatolian Neolithic farmers ancestry. So there's been a mixture on the way up to uh, Brunan Bibirge. We had one individual which uh, approximately had all ANF related um, ancestry. So this individual actually came from uh, Anatolia or his parents came from An Anatolia. Then we have a uh, strontium isotope analysis that re uh, revealed that uh, the 50% um, individual which uh, had a admixture between the uh, Mesolithic hunter gatherers and the um, uh, Anatolian Neolithic farmers was non-local to the uh, Brunn area and to the northeastern uh, Austria area. And this individual maybe came from the Balaton reach, region in Hungary. So we have a strong um, uh, indication for interbreeding be, uh, between um, incoming farmers with um, maybe local um, hunter-gatherers. Okay, right now um, I will talk um, or I will show you some facts about the site uh, three, which is about 300 years younger uh, than the site two. It was excavated um, in the years between 1989 and 1999. And um, it's a compare, if you compare it to the site two, it's a very small excavation, only 1.4 football fields big. And over there we can find um, at least 18 houses with a very good status of um, preservation. Um, yeah, we say that it's part of the Milanovce phase between 5,265 uh, 5, and 5,220. And over here, the houses are orientated in a totally different way. As you can see, the houses differ uh, orientated north, south, like 40, or the southern part of house um, 41 or the northern part of house 35, but most of the houses are orientated north, uh, east to southwest. 
Yeah, as I told you in the beginning, there are some uh, house roll continuing to the east. This part here is um, currently overbuilt, and th this was part of the excavation. And as you can see, this uh, house rolls are continuing to the east, disturbed by some uh, bomb hits from the Second World War. So we have um, 33 houses more expected and 18 houses excavated. So maybe uh, this is the biggest part of the settlement with uh, more than 60 houses. Here's a very good example for a um, bow type of house, a type uh, uh, two or three, we don't know because it could be, the, uh, it can be that there are uh, two different phases of construction. As you can see, the houses uh, are different orientated in the south than in, uh, in the north than in the south. But I will tell you, tell you more. It's about uh, 22 meters long and six meters uh, wide. So uh, actually the houses of site uh, three are uh, yeah, a bit longer, but uh, they are not so wide as a site uh, uh, two houses, a site uh, two uh, houses, yeah. The orientation is 12 degrees north, northeast. And we have a time span with the highest probability between 5,260 uh, 5, to 5,250 with uh, one sample used. So as I already mentioned, there are some indications for um, uh, different uh, steps of constructions. Over here, you can see a totally different orientated um, uh, pits or uh, the clay extraction pits in the northern part. But this part was actually integrated into uh, the building, as you can see on the transverse rows or cross rows and on the longitudinal house row, uh, rows. This is actually the deepest uh, part of the house. It's um, in Germany, we call it Querpfostenheit 20. It's a transverse road 20, which is an element of the oldest LBK buildings. And um, uh, yeah, like Tishi um, said, it's a house of type of Mohelnitz, I, I think. Yeah, this is uh, actually my favorite. It's house uh, 38. It's a uh, yeah, you, you can call it Großbau because we have here indications for double posts. So um, maybe there's a, a elevated floor in this area here. And it's one of the best um, preserved ones. And um, the ground form is not a rectangular, it's a trapezoidal, as you can see. Um, the inner um, framework are, is parallel, but the walls are getting bigger from uh, north to south. Uh, it's about 20 meters long. It's the average length of uh, site three, and it's about seven meters uh, uh, wide in the south and 5.4 uh, um, meters wide in, in the north. So this house actually grows at about 1.5 meters from north to south. It's orientated to the north, northeast, and it's probably erected uh, 5,200 before Christ. There are strong traces of fires inside it. As you can see here, this is the western middle post. It's actually this post, one of the deepest posts. And there was a whole package of burnt clay found in it. And um, the last two years, there was two uh, bachelor theses about it uh, at the BOKU. It's the University for Natural Sciences in Vienna. And they tested the um, burnt clay and it was actually fired with temperatures higher than 700 degrees, uh, maybe 800 to 900 degrees. And this is uh, um, evidence for, yeah, for, for a full fire event with flash over and pre flash over phase. So this picture is actually from um, one experiment from the Kukutini houses in Romania. They tried to, to burn the houses down and they had to add additional fuel to the walls to uh, get the right experiment. So um, maybe we have, we have to talk a bit more um, in the future about uh, burned down horizons of the ABK. This is actually the view from um, the north. And uh, I reconstructed this house and um, I did my um, um, static um, measurements uh, about it. And it's very interesting because the eastern nav 
it's this part here, it's wider than the uh, Western NAV. So um, this led me to two different um, assumptions or uh, questions. Are the different roof pitches on uh, both sides of the house? Or do you have the same roof pitch? Um, if you have um, the same roof pitch on um, both sides of the house, um, this would result um, different heights of the lateral middle posts here. And so I reconstructed it um, with um, same height middle posts. And then we have a steeper roof in the west and a flatter roof in the east, um, which makes sense because in the east, um, there are a lot of um, external trenches uh, which are um, which are not uh, continuing, which are have uh, gaps in it. And maybe here we have lateral entrances on the east side would be uh, the better way to enter the house in the south and east than in the west, because the west is the west facing side. And um, we have actually 20 square meters more on the, on the eastern house roof than on the west. So um, we can actually talk about our uh, weather side. Yeah. There are some more peculiarities at site three um, because there are some dependencies on um, transverse, uh, transverse row. As you can see here, they are um, on the same height constructed and there are two different orientations. Uh, I'll picture it here. And maybe we can talk about um, yeah, building a new house uh, besides um, uh, an old house and taking the measurements from it. That would be a first indicator for it. Yeah. Let's talk about the ceramics of um, site three. There's a total number of 900 vessels. And as you can see, um, the um, vessels are, uh, we have a lot of pottery with plant remains. Uh, but the amount of sand is smaller than in site two. And um, we have uh, more vessels with ochre on it and white elements in the clay. And we have a second tube with the same admixture in it, but um, a very thin angle. So um, Natasha Yakotova uh, called this type the sandwich type. It's a, a gray, light yellow, thin layer and um, thick black gray layer in the center. So this is the first step to, um, yeah, to speak about this uh, uh, ceramics. Here are some examples for our amphorae. As you can see, we have more decorations on it compared to the side two. Here are some globular vessels, examples for high bowls, for low bowls, and for pots. And, um, here are some uh, decorations like the hook. It's, um, uh, yeah, it's a decoration which uh, appears only um, inside uh, three or some meander bands like here or here. Then we have uh, amulets and little idols. Here, this amulet was actually found at house 37 and it's comparable to idols from Romania, from Slovakia, from Hungary or from Germany. And these are fragments from idols. They can be compared to the idol of um, Sillingtal, it's in Austria. And um, over here, you can see different idols, one to four are from Brunan Gebirge, and five is from Brunan Gebirge side two, it's the oldest side. And they can be compared to um, others from Winzer, Winzer culture or from Germany. Yeah, then we have a um, musical instrument or hypothetical instrument. Uh, besides the flutes, we have um, um, yeah, bells. And uh, the flutes can be compared to the Gellenhase settlement in Hungary or uh, of Chavo Govata settlement in Bulgaria. And this is actually the uh, youngest site here on the southern edge of the whole settlement. And it's a small area with about um, six houses. This house world belongs to the oldest site, but these houses over here are actually the youngest houses. And um, here the settlement of Brunangebirge ends, 
at about 5,100 BC. And um, the house orientation is totally different again. Here we find houses orientated west to east, and it's um, yeah totally uncommon for uh, um, um, South European ABK buildings orientated in this way. So um, these are actually no residential buildings. Here's a look at the uh, good preserved one with some uh, reconstructions or I did. And as you can see, we have um, walls in the north and in the south, but not in the west and in the east. So we can talk about two different um, yeah, ways of constructing walls, like with clamped boards in, in the west and south, uh, west and east, or maybe they were open. Would make sense because they are very small. And actually, you cannot good work uh, through it because there are a lot of posts in it. So um, I say these are type three buildings. And um, actually, there is a, a big pit found uh, north of it, which was uh, back into the earth. And uh, there were over 12,000 zero uh, grains found, Einkorn and Emma, chart zero grains. So um, I interpreted as uh, um, yeah, some storage uh, buildings for example, for straw or hay. Yeah, there's actually some research I want to talk about here at the very end. So um, I did some um, research about uh, reconstructing, for example, the trapezoidal buildings. Um, I talked about the uh, transmission of some architectural in elements like the uh, interspace between two neighboring crossroads. And right now we are um, planning or we are writing about an article about common features in the ceramics and house building in the earliest middle of the phase sites in Austria, of example, Polnamgebirge, and Germany, uh, the Schwanfeld site. It's very interesting, I'll show you uh, in the next steps. But at first I want to talk about um, the architectural elements of the LBK houses. On both sides of the houses, we have uh, naturally uh, the clay extraction pits used for the metal and dog walls. Then uh, on the interior sides, we have um, in the oldest LBK trenches. It's called um, Außengräben in Deutsch or um, external trenches. And these trenches can be situated as um, alone standing or they can be constructed inside the actually clay extraction pit like here. Then we have uh, different sets of transverse rows and longitudinal post rows. The green one is the rich post row and um, the lateral ones are the middle post row west and middle post row east. And then we have um, the walls, the western wall and the eastern wall and the, of course the uh, northern and southern wall. And this is uh, yeah, a common uh, reconstruction at the Mammut in um, Mistelbach in Austria. It's a reconstruction of a, a type one building of the Schwechert settlement close to Brunnamgebirge. So, I, and I ask myself what um, architectural elements can we actually compare or which are su suitable for comparison. And I think the clay, clay extraction pits are very uh, suitable because uh, if we have the data about volume area, depth, uh, length, and so on, we can. Um, talk about the weighting of the house side. The trenches as well, um, if you have the dimensions and the data, we can talk about the weighting of the house side. For example, in most cases in Brunnam Gebirge, these are interrupted on the east side and continuing on the western side. And um, this is only possible in the oldest phase. Then we have the longitudinal post rows. And um, you compare, for example, the um, overall length of it and we compare the post instances between two uh, neighboring transverse rows, for example. Yeah, in the transverse rows or cross rows, we can measure the overall width and the post distances and the dependencies uh, inside the actual layout. But uh, it's very essential to state uh, if you measure from post pit, um, uh, from the midpoints of the post pits or from the midpoints of the post traces, if uh, preserved. What's not uh, suitable, in my opinion, is um, the walls because they are often eroded. They are um, 
there are different post distances and we have different type of construction. This is a very interesting example from the Dresden Mokritz W uh, DD27 settlement in Dresden. And as you can see, we have a uh, over 40 meters long uh, gross bar with uh, double walls in the, in the south. Then we have a single wall here. Then we have um, um, yeah wetland drop walls. And maybe we have closed boarding here in this part. So um, actually, you have to describe what you um, want to um, compare. Um, but I think the walls are not suitable. The house alignment is also um, very um, difficult because um, the same type of house can be oriented in a different way as the um, houses at the uh, Paris uh, Basin settlements uh, show. We have a very wide uh, range of orientation. Um, the house width is not suitable because um, actually you have to say if you measure from wall to wall or from ditch to ditch and uh, from the outer limits or from the inner, inner limits, Everyone is measuring in a different way. So if you want to compare uh, several houses, it's uh, it's hard work. The same is for uh, the house length. And um, actually, I wanted to compare the oldest house, one of the oldest houses on the left hand side. It's a rectangular building with a, a trapezoidal building, which is 300 years uh, younger. So I choose as um, one of the important points, the area between two crossroads, because um, they are mostly preserved in all cases of houses. So as you can see here on house 38, this house has uh, uh, five um, interspaces, which I called modular construction or the modules. So I asked myself, is there actually a modular construction in the early Neolithic? And um, I showed it because um, over here we have the fact that uh, they omitted a transverse row here in the second model, which is the same size as um, the first si uh, area and the third area, for example, added. And the last three areas are the same areas I like the two uh, first two areas. So it's, uh, I think it's a, it's a very um, interesting way to compare this building because it's uh, probably for the house builds of the early Neolithic, one of the simplest steps. Uh, actually, we don't know if the uh, of uh, if these people are, um, had something like um, yeah measurements and so on. But um, it would be very nice to go um, to go in this uh, research as the next step. So uh, I look for. Uh, comparable houses at first. And I found, for example, um, house 17 from the Schwanfeld settlement. And I wanted to compare it. So I uh, projected house 38 in red on top of um, house 16 from the Schwanfeld settlement. And uh, at first, I had to adjust the orientation. Then I had to floor, uh, scale the floor plans. Then I had to look for a, a projection point. This is very good in the oldest APK because we have the transverse row 20, the deepest element of the house, and it's suitable for a, project, a projection point. And we have to um, talk about the area of comparison. It doesn't make sense to compare um, one um, floor plan from here with a floor plan which starts here. So um, you have to define it. And then you can calculate the matches and dependencies if the uh, uh, data is available. So for example, I show you similar constructed houses. This is um, actually in red one on uh, the Brunnen houses projected on uh, the house one from the Mintraching uh, settlement in Southeastern Bavaria or Miskovitz um, house uh, 85, uh, 80, uh, 58. Then we have a projection of Schwanfeld um, house 15 and uh, Brunnen house 11. Then we have a projection on the um, Balaton settlements. And what's very interesting, you can project uh, excavated um, houses on top of um, houses uh, from the geophysics, just to say if these pits are actually post pits or not. And um, it's just a way for a kind of predictive model modeling. So um, as a first step, I um, 
defined uh, the space between two crosswords as a module. And uh, I think this um, procedure can be used uh, regardless of existing typologies or chronologies, like the brand modern schema, for example. And um, I showed that uh, with this system, I uh, was able to compare uh, different houses from different sites, from different um, yeah, places in the chronology. And as you, see, as you can see here, the lateral pits are ending at the very same um, height. It's uh, sometimes very astonishing if, 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 you, if you look on a different projection. The same is here. Um, the lateral pits are ending on the same. Uh, um, yeah, hey, here are some um, examples for the total area of all modules. Um, houses are compared again. Um, the funny thing is we have here neighboring settlements uh, with houses that are constructed in the same way, like here the Schwächer settlement in Brun. And over here, I compared the Lietzow, I hope I pronounce it in the right way, with the Miskovice settlement. House 12 and um, house 32 are uh, actually pretty the same. But we have um, houses from settlements which are far, far away and which are, have the same interior area. And this speaks for some um, targeted construction during the early Neolithic. So um, in, in a radius of about 100 kilometers from Brunnengebirge, we have uh, agreement of um, almost 60%. And 220 kilometers away, um, I measured um, also 60% in a, a distance of 500 kilometers. Um, the agreement was by 55 uh, to 56% at least. And um, yeah, the houses for most far away were um, up to 650 kilometers away from Brunnen Gebirge, like the Großselheim settlement. And there were houses with an agreement of 55% as. Well, so we have a strong tradition of uh, certain ar architectural elements, for example, the interior layout or the modules, I call it so. Maybe we have a uniform measurement uh, system in the LBK as early as the early Neolithic, or we have um, measurement taken from existing building and then projected uh, on new sites or on neighboring houses. But uh, I think both questions could be right. And um, right now it's uh, time to do some more work on it. So if you want to read it, <laughs> you can read it. Um, it's actually in print and it's available uh, in the next two uh, weeks. It's my uh, book about the um, comparison and the um, house construction of the 6 billion BC. Thank you for your attention.